Hey, what's up? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Daniel Isn't Real. Out right now. This guy's in it. Miles Robbins. I'm in the movie. What's up, man? Good How's to meet it you. going? Good to meet you, too. Thanks for coming in. Of course. I really like this chair. Yeah, you're going to be swiveling. This happens this in is every This really <laughs> fun. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, listen, you've I'll done interviews yeah, okay. today. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy yourself. Just, okay, cool. I'll, 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 try to, I'll try to be a professional. Here. I like it. Okay. it. It seems like you enjoyed yourself in this one, maybe in kind of a dark, sort of crazy way, but... This is a pretty fascinating watch, so how yeah. did you jump into the whole thing? Well, it's definitely a lot of fun to do all the, uh, the you know, prosthetics mm -hmm. and kind of uh, spookies. Um, the hard, you know, horror genre is uh, a great place to play and uh, do fun stuff like that, movie magic stuff. Um, I love movie magic stuff. Mm -hmm. I love doing special effects and this kind of thing because... If there wasn't movie magic, we'd just be watching plays, right? Yep. So um, get a little boring after. Which is, more. you know, but you know, hey, like I, I love a good play, but if we're doing a movie, like let's go all the way there Absolutely. and have some spaghetti monsters and stuff. You know? <laughs> Definitely let's, some let's, of that. In yeah, this. let's do that. Yeah. So that was fun, um, and yeah, I mean, it's a really, uh, it's a really dark movie, and it was pretty tough, uh, but. I got to work with this guy, this beautiful man. Uh, he was a really kind person, a mm. lot nicer than his character is. Mm. Well, that's good. And yeah, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank God for that. Um, and yeah, you know, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a good time that we had, I think. That's awesome. Um, did you guys know each other before No, not before, um, but we met and did not dislike each other. So that was Another a, positive a big win. And then yeah. we got to enjoy working together, which is, uh, is yeah, is really a pleasure, so. It seems like there are parts of this that were probably tough to film, just from an emotional standpoint, yeah. just from like a design <laughs> standpoint. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What were some of the different challenges that you faced along the way? Um, I mean, I think it's tough making a horror movie. I learned for the first time. I mean, I was in Halloween where, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a horror movie, but my character only spends about 13 seconds being frightened. Right. Um, and, uh, this uh, this was my first experience of spending like a month where every day I was like in terror or being tortured psychologically. And so, um, I mean, not every single day, but for most mm -hmm. of it. Uh, and uh, and yeah, that, that, that's, that's tough. I mean, I really gained a lot of respect for horror actors because your body doesn't really know it's fake mm -hmm. and uh, it can be really taxing. So when I look at, what some actors have done in some horror films before. Uh, I got a lot of uh, respect for that now. What are some of your favorite horror films? Uh, well, recently, I mean, I just really loved uh, Midsummer. Mm -hmm. recently. I mean, I also love uh, Hereditary. I think Ari's really, really clever, um, really great filmmaking, That those movies. Uh, and Florence was really, really great in Midsummer. That's, I think, someone who I kind of... Uh, very recently appreciated their <laughs> their work in the in the traumatic acting kind of uh, genre. Um, but hey, I mean, I love Houseu is one of my favorite movies mm. ever made. The Japanese horror film, um, uh, Rosemary's Baby, uh, Twenty Eight Days Later is one of my favorite films ever. And I think that a lot of it is about what the genre can do uh, in giving you the tools to talk about social issues mm. without being too uh, on the nose, right. um, you can use metaphor and abstraction to kind of give the audience an impression of something that, uh, but with a with a delivery method that's a little bit more subtle, maybe. Mm. And so that's uh, really really nice uh, to be able to do that with genre films. Yeah, and absolutely. This has a bit of that in there too, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. And I think it's nice that you have this whole range of films because, like, even just the ones you brought up are pretty specific. Like. The sure. fact that your your acting now is informed by all that, like, do you find that that's benefited you along the way so far? Uh, sorry, so, so like, how, in how, terms of like the range of movies that you reference that you've watched from when you were a kid to now, like, do you think that's informed the actor that you are or just the art that you're making? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, you know we're all just kind of uh, drinking from the same bowl mm -hmm. over and over. Um, I. Uh, I don't think that I'm particularly heady about acting. I don't really look at 
what other actors do and say like, I'm not gonna do that, man. <laughs> I feel um, like there are a lot of heady actors. It's nice to hear. Maybe that you yeah. Know. No, I think that. I mean, for me, I think acting is kind of about trying not to act, like just trying to exist mm -hmm. in in someone else's shoes, not think too much about what you're doing. Um, I mean, there's certainly styles of acting that that are very grandiose and kind of. Uh, but I think that nowadays everything's getting a little more uh, restrained. I think after like the mumblecore kind of mm. movement, things are are uh, becoming more and more uh, lifelike yeah. when it comes to to performing on the screen. So I just try to kind of uh, live in it and uh, do my best job because uh, I'm super lucky to be able to do it mm -hmm. as a job. Yeah. So. I think I that perspective is really important. <laughs> yeah, dude. I think that the best thing that anyone can do when they're acting is just be grateful for the opportunity to do it because mm -hmm. um, a lot of people want to do it. It's a really fun job. And uh, I think that if you're grateful, it means that you do a better job with it because mm. you uh, try to show your appreciation through that kind of... Uh, you know, serious work. Right. Hopefully don't take yourself seriously. I hope I don't ever take myself <laughs> seriously, but, uh, you know, try to take the thing seriously. And Well, I think being grounded is really important. I mean, like, you've seen it from the time you were a kid to now. Like, we put celebrities on a different pedestal. And I'm sure it's, like, it's a weird thing when, you know, mom and dad are treated differently, and you're just like, why is it like that, you know? So how have you kind of wrapped your head around just celebrity culture, you know, that Yeah, thing? well, you know, honestly, to be honest, like, that's probably the best phrasing of a question about my parents that I've ever had because yeah it, it, it is just weird to uh grow up with that they're just my parents yep. you know and they're not like they never tried to make me an actor mm -hmm. or anything and i just was like you know they were like what how, how the test go you know i don't know it's, <laughs> right, the, just like they're just my parents, parents. Yeah. they're like eat your breakfast um and uh and so yeah like I guess I did get a good perspective on how ridiculous it is that people think that celebrities are like important mm -hmm. <laughs> just by <laughs> just by the nature of them like being known by people right. like uh, it I think is a good perspective to have to grow up with that and be capable of s seeing that so that you you know see the kind of uh celebrity worship that goes on and know that it, those people all go, you know, take a shit. Right. <laughs> like, exactly. Like you don't do think exactly that, the same thing. Yeah, they're all just, you know, hairless monkeys wearing pants. Mm. So, <laughs> it's, I like that description. Yeah. <laughs> so when you think about it yourself, like you tried out a bunch of different things. Like you were doing the music stuff for a little while. Like how did you kind of go about finding what made sense for you and kind of shaping your own identity with everything? Well, I still make music, and I think that I wouldn't be able to you know, I wouldn't be able to live as an actor if I couldn't also be doing other kinds of creative mm -hmm. pursuits because the acting thing, you kind of have to rely on someone else to give you the chance. Right. You can't just, like, go do it in your bedroom. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I guess you, you could. could. but it <laughs> probably wouldn't be as fulfilling. Yeah, as yeah that maybe way. not. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, no, I just, I think that uh, all different kinds of art have different kinds of therapeutic qualities. Mm -hmm. I think that music is a deeply personal thing for me that I'm able to uh, tell my stories and experiences through a kind of poetry. Um, but I think that acting is a really great opportunity to uh, practice empathy mm -hmm. and experience totally. other people's perspectives and other people's lives. And empathy is a really important practice. It's really a practice more than it is a quality. And um, I think that in order to keep doing that, you know, uh, having acting as a part of my life is like a really uh, beautiful and therapeutic thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that uh, that it's, I, I would hope that everyone who makes art would make at least two different kinds of art. Yeah. <laughs> because it helps, it, everything helps each other and um, yeah, we all help each other with with uh, little movies like that. Totally. Did yeah. you find this therapeutic, <laughs> or was it something else that you were focusing on here with this? I mean, I don't think it was therapeutic for me to go experience that kind of pain and terror and stuff that right. you do it's in these the kinds of movies. Yeah. Um, but I would hope that it might be for someone watching the mm -hmm. film. 
uh, in a way to kind of feel seen if they've ever experienced that kind of feeling. Um, but it, regardless, I think it you know helped me understand a person. You know, this guy is mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, you know, he's a young man who. Uh, wants to be a man, wants to know what it is to grow up and be a man. And uh, he starts to engage in thought patterns connected to his childhood imaginary right. friend that ultimately are destructive and painful. And I think that it is very similar to the way that a lot of young men uh, get caught up in thought patterns of what it means to become a man mm -hmm. that are given to them by society or by, uh, you know, cultures of other young men, um, that these thought patterns then are, are ultimately very toxic and uh, make them a danger to themselves and to others. And I think we see far too much of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I was hoping that with this we could have a portrait of a vulnerable man being taken in by that kind of influence uh, so that we might find some empathy for that kind of guy. Yeah, this is kind of like right up in your face with all that because your, your character is trying to rip away from all of it and Daniel's trying to like pull you back and that's yeah. kind of symbolic of what's happening for some men in our culture too. So yeah, to I, think that that, I think that a lot of, uh, you know, the, what is often referred to as toxic masculinity mm -hmm. is a culture that is, uh, yeah, it's something that a lot of young men might not know that they are able to steer away from right. um, just because it's been so deeply ingrained in a deeply patriarchal society mm. for such a long time. Right. But, uh, but vulnerability and uh, self-awareness and uh, self-understanding, it, it's, it's a really important quality for a person. And, um, and it's critical. Yeah, yeah and, and so, so young men, I think, need to know that that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, this kind of voice in your head isn't the thing that makes you stronger. Right, and vulnerability um, isn't weakness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The other thing is like mental illness. I'm thinking about that, mm. especially with your character's mother. Like maybe right. for the people that haven't been able to talk with others about like family members who are just kind of a little out there. I think this is an important film for that. So yeah. what was it like unpacking that? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's tricky because it's, uh, all mental illness is different, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it manifests in different ways. Um, but the overarching thing here, I think, is just about the, uh, or the thing that I connected to with this is that it's important for people to feel heard, to feel understood, and to be listened to. Um, and to know that it's okay to share the way that you're feeling with people. Um, and you know, through all of Luke's torture, one thing I really appreciate about the script is that he does seek help, and it shows you know that uh, it is important to seek help, but it's not always uh, you know it's it's not like it's just uh, something that you you seek help and then everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Like it's a process with everyone's different different experiences of different kinds of mental illness. It's a it's always a pro process and a practice. Um, and something that's a struggle. And, uh, uh, you know, Luke, my character, struggles with this and this and film, and it's, uh, you know, not always necessarily a victory for right. him. So, um, but that, you know, the tragedy in there is something that hopefully we can all kind of appreciate and, uh, and uh, find some kind of, uh, you know, I uh, kind of rambled on there for a second. No, it's all good. Just, edit. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> right. the beauty of that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, I think that there's something in this character, in this dynamic, in this struggle that people will find a way to identify with um, in many different ways, whether oh. it's mental illness or uh, toxic masculinity or any of these kinds of uh, plagues of the mind. So for the people that know you, family, friends, et cetera, was it surprising to see you play a character like this? Was it something that they thought you could pull off? What have been some of the reactions? I, you know, yeah, I had a, one of my best friends tell me that they had for they had like managed to forget that it was me when they were mm -hmm. watching that, it. That's the best thing you could say. It was the best compliment I've yeah. ever received, and 
I don't know. I mean, I, the, he also said, though, that there was one scene in particular where he couldn't stop laughing because <laughs> it was very clearly me. Mm. Um, there's, but only your best friend. It's only my that. goofs. Yeah. It's only when I'm doing the goofs. Mm -hmm. I think that you can tell that it's because... Easy. Cause I love a goof. I love a goof. I love a gag. Um, but uh, but yeah, no. I mean, uh, I think that it was really lovely to hear that. But uh, hopefully, they know that I, you know, I'm not a method actor. Mm. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> so when people check this out, what are some big things you want them to take away from it once they watch? Um, I uh, I want them to get spooked. Uh, I want them to go, oh boy, that was that was scary. Yep, um, I, want, that. <laughs> I want them to uh, to say, wow, he's that's you know, wow, what an actor. He's just, oh, he did, he's doing great. Mm. I want people to think that. I like it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah. That's a review right there. There's yeah, nothing else that needs to be yeah. said. Um, no, I hope that uh, I hope that people. Uh, are able to see something of the pain that they might have experienced uh, themselves or in the people around them, uh, and to uh, find some kind of comfort in knowing that that experience is pretty universal because it's weird to be a person. Yep, so, amen to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice right. you, Good to meet you too. Cheers. Check this guy out in his movie. It's out today for Miles. I'm DJ. See you next time. Go watch the movie. Sit down. Yeah, thank you.